Hello and welcome to the Language Tavern. Today's video will be more of a podcast than a regular one. Currently I'm finishing up my master's thesis on non-native accents in English and it takes just too much time to be able to make a full format video. So anyways, recently I've been wondering why people have accents. In our native languages we're usually able to hear if someone is speaking with an accent, be it a foreign accent or a native regional variety, but for some reason people seem to be having hard times reproducing accents other than their native one. And while I was doing my research I came across an interesting term, phonological sieve. It was a term introduced by the big sugar daisy of phonetics and phonology, Trubitskoy. In one of his works he wrote this, the sounds of the foreign language are given an incorrect phonological interpretation since they are filtered through the phonological sieve a one's own language. Well, there is now a better and a more scientific term for this, sound approximation. Basically, it means that people hear the sounds of a foreign language through the veil of the sounds that exist in their native language. For instance, if you're a native English speaker, chances are words goose and goose sound more or less the same for you. Or at the very least, you don't think these are two different words. But if you were a native speaker of French, a pair of words tu and tu would be two different words. What I mean by this is uh, that in English there is no phonemic distinction between o and e. These are just allophones of a single sound. While in other languages these two sounds may create a minimal pair. And when learning, say, French, this distinction might be your weak spot for quite some time. Another good example would be the difference between kit and fleece vowels in English. For a native speaker, or a proficient speaker, the difference is clear. On the other hand, we have Russian, which doesn't differentiate between these two vowels even though the kit vowel exists as an allophone of E, like in the words internet, where the initial vowel is often produced the same way as the English kit vowel. Nevertheless, Russian speakers don't even realize they have it and when learning English, Russian speakers have troubles hearing and even more so producing the kit vowel as they don't really think of it as something different from regular E. Now, it leads us to the next point. What if I hear the difference, but I can't imitate it? If you ever had such a thought in your mind, then there is an answer. The thing is that we learn to speak in the so-called critical period. It is roughly the age between 2 and 7 years. During this time, our facial muscles learn to catch a specific number of sounds that are relevant for our own native language and reproduce it. When you grow up not using other facial muscles, they simply become weaker as they are not really used that much. But when you learn to speak a foreign language that has a system of sounds that is different from the one you find in your native language, well, which is almost always the case, you force these ever-chilling, not working muscles to work. Just remember the last time you did that new triceps exercise for the first time. You might have never realized you have those muscles. Well, to sum this up, learning a different set of sounds requires hard, long and regular training to make these muscles grow and get used to the new positions they might have never taken before. So I hope you like this type of format. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. And see you next time.